In the history of pro wrestling in Quebec, there has been many legendary wrestlers. Yvonne Robert, members of the Rougeau family, the Ladukes, uh, you know, uh, Kevin Steen, everybody else. But was one wrestler is always very close to our hearts as Acadians and Quebecois and the Canadians. Joseph Maurice Regis Vachon, better known as Bad Dog Vachon. The brother of wrestlers Paul and Vivian Vacho and the uncle of wrestler Luna Vacho. Mad Dog's style was one of a kind. Every event he took part in, he made it his own, whether as a heel or a beloved champion, which was the majority of the second half of his career. He was a Canadian and Quebecois hero in many, many areas, many levels. He represented uh, his province, his nation, with distinction, starting with his career as an amateur wrestler in the 1948 Summer Olympics and uh, he later uh, represented Canada in the 1950 British Empire Games when he won a gold in his weight class. Now uh, he made the switch to professional wrestling uh, soon after and spent time in uh, uh, various uh, promotion, promotion in the United States and he also teamed with his uh, brother Paul the Butcher Vasho in many many uh, championship uh, tag team runs. Uh, and when he was wrestling in Portland, Oregon, he received, he received his name Mad Dog. Now there's different theories why he, why he was called uh, the Mad Dog because he did look like kind of a combination of a pit bull and a very very mad bouncer at a Quebec bar in the 1950s. Uh, but he said he, a lot of people think his main motivation when he was a young child he regularly attended wrestling shows at uh, the Montreal Forum because he was, you know, uh, from the Montreal, the Quebec area. And he grew up idol idolizing Yvonne Robert. Uh, and at age 12, he allegedly started uh, wrestling at local uh, YMCAs. He became uh, quickly uh, training for various provincial and national teams. And uh, at the age of, uh, tender age of 18, he competed uh, in the Olympic Games in London where his first match he pinned the champion in India in less than a minute. Now he finished in seventh place at 174 pounds, which was, you know, he's a good weight. He was less than uh, five foot eight, 170 pounds, uh, all muscle. And uh, he uh, actually lost to eventual silver medalist Adil Academy of Turkey. Now, uh, this is where the shift came in. Uh, it was at the 40 Olympics where Varshal first encountered a style of wrestling called, uh, called Full Greco Roman which uh, was led at the time, or would be led at the time, by a competitor called Vern Gagne, which eventually uh, he became the head of the AWA and brought Maurice in as part of his uh, revised uh, federation. Because at the time, AWA was considered uh, uh, kind of not, say, the top national federation in the States, but because Gagne was from uh, Minnesota and he had that kind of Canadian-American mix, there was a lot of Canadian-American people that followed uh, the Federation. Now, with the Mad Dog persona, he started to work on his own style. Now, uh, allegedly, he took radical me measures to uh, create his uh, persona, where he built himself up to 225 pounds, and he started wearing, uh, you know, a goatee with a bald head. And uh, he would also buy local TV time and kind of establish the characters that, I'm going to tell you something, I'm going to get him, I'm going to get you whoever would be it. But uh, the uh, Portland pr promoter Don Owen said basically I had to call him Mad Dog because there's one occasion uh, he uh, lost control and uh, you know uh, took care of uh, stuff inside and outside the uh, ring and uh, he actually hit a cop in the process and afterwards of this incident Owen told him you know you really look like a real Mad Dog out there and that's uh, basically what happened. Now, as working on the, uh, what they call the federated or independent uh, uh, wrestling circuit, he became kind of one, not to say the originator of hardcore uh, wrestling, but he had a tendency to hurt his opponents with everything from, you know, foreign object, file fingernails, and uh, 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 his teeth. And he was well known to use something what's called, well now the pile driver, but it was his signature finishing move and uh, it made, made him notorious in the business and actually the move was eventually banned in at least three states. But his anger in the rink 
started to make his popularity grow because the people wanted to see blood and guts and Mad Dog would uh, uh, bring it, as we like to say. Uh, <laughs> in the early 1960s, where it really became big with the Verd Gay and the AWA, uh, Verd had taken over the Federation. Uh, he became the chief promoter. He was also the centerpiece champion. Now, uh, upon debuting AWA, he became the top box office draws because, you know, the people would despise his, the way he would wrestle. Now, with the AWA, there was a lot of uh, major bouts. Uh, the, uh, he took out all the covers, including Gange, Mighty Igor, uh, the Crusher, and Dick the Bruiser. And he had five reigns in the AWA as heavyweight champion. Uh, and he uh, feuded as well in his native Montreal territory, uh, as well with uh, Johnny Rougeau and Hans Schmidt over the IWA international title. And they had great connections with the Montreal Canadiens as well because him and John Bellamo were good friends. And uh, yeah, he got a promoting license uh, at the Forum for a while. But uh, after a short time in Montreal, he went back to AWA again uh, with the Crusher and uh, Dick Bruiser had a big feud. And uh, he more he was more in tag team business at, at the time after the big runs with his brother. And he became considered, the, if not the number one tag team in the world, the most... Uh, you know, uh, angry or grappling uh, tag team. They were legendary. They were loved from Vancouver uh, to uh, to Newfoundland and all in the states worldwide. And uh, you know, he would sell out venues like Jerry Park in Montreal, the old Minnesota Minneapolis Forum, different locations. Uh, but he always became kind of the go-to guy for when the AWA needed a boost and like Vergangi wasn't stupid he always looked after the young wrestlers coming up but him being so radical there was a famous story where he was uh, very paranoid on a flight and uh, he tried to tried to try to open the door to bring in some fresh air his shoots were legendary especially the famous uh, Crusher Blackwell I'm gonna get you shoot where uh, me and Gene Oakland found him making a coffin in the basement of his house and saying that, you know, he had worked deep down in the mines to learn the egg or needed to, to, to be Crusher Fatwell and that uh, he was uh, creating this uh, coffin to way, put away for good. His shoots were legendary, stand-up, great Mike guy. But uh, he... Uh, the only down part of his life, of course, is when uh, uh, that uh, he was uh, struck... Uh, by hit and run driver in 1987 and the resulting amputation of one of his legs the uh, the accident didn't uh, stop him from loving wrestling and taking part but he uh, he was kind of obviously forced into retirement and uh, he became an actor he did a lot of beer commercials and became a restaurant critic he was a renaissance guy now uh, he had married a woman from Nebraska actually uh, I guess the first uh, met where uh, Bad Dog spat out a, a foreign object, a string that was being kept on his boat, and I guess the string accidentally hit his beloved. And together, uh, they had six children, seven grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren. And uh, when he died in 2013, it was almost like a part of Quebec history and Canadian wrestling history died with him. But here I am uh, talking about him almost 71 years after he became probably the most iconic uh, Canadian amateur wrestler of his time, and we're still talking about him. Now, if you go on Wikipedia in different uh, locations, to see the amount of titles he has won and the recognition he has won, he's in numerous Hall of Fames, Quebec and World Wrestling Entertainment, Wrestling Observer, uh, you know, uh, even had uh, people kind of mimic his style. If you see a lot of crazy wrestlers in 2019, it's the, it's the Mad Dog version. But Mad Dog was loved by children. He was loved by the women because he was our Mad Dog. He, everybody loved him for what he was. And Mad Dog, if anything, is an example that if you have perseverance and you, you keep your goals. And Mad Dog wasn't the best wrestler in the world. He wasn't uh, the, the, the one that looked the prettiest. But my God, he was over, as we say in the business. Can you imagine a wrestling uh, legacy in Quebec without Mad Dog? I mean, that's the that's your... It's like the Montreal Canadiens with no Jean Beliveau. 
uh, or like Montreal Alouettes with Osani Wade. He was the legend of Quebec. And like I said, every day that goes by when I see uh, the old AWA tapes or I see a really crazy wrestler, I said, yeah, you're trying, but you're no mad dog. So on this uh, beautiful uh, day, uh, we're waiting for another storm to come to Brunswick. Keep your stick in the ice. And to all my wrestling fans in Quebec, je dis français, the celebration de mad dog, c'est tout le jour. The celebration of mad dog is every day. Because if you love the mad dog, you love wrestling. And we all love you, mad dog. We do miss it. Have a good one. Bye.